there, everybody. Matt O'Ree back here with you. Once again, welcome back to Mob on TV. This is episode number 16, an entire episode on the Fender guitars that I still own and use. Now, back when I first started playing, my older brother Chris turned me on to Jimi Hendrix. And of course, seeing Jimi play a Fender Stratocaster, well, I had to have one too. So for a long, long time, I was a Stratocaster player until eventually I got turned on to the Gibson Les Paul. Probably because of the music that I started writing at that time really leaned more towards that Les Paul sound. And of course, the band that I have now today, well, the Les Paul just fits it a bit better. But I still cherish my Fenders. I still love them. I use them in the studio. Every once in a while, I bring one out on stage. So we have five different ones to take a listen to. Let's get started. So the first guitar that's up is one you might have seen in my previous videos. But if you're just tuning in now, well, I'll go through it again. This is my 1961 Slabboard Fender Stratocaster. The slabboard stands for the thickness of the Brazilian rosewood fretboard that was glued onto the neck. And there's a period of time from 1959 to mid of 1962 that's considered a slabboard Fender Stratocaster. And to me, that error has the best tone of all the Stratocasters. So this has the original tuners, the nut has been changed, and the frets have been changed. Everything else is exactly the way it came from the factory. Original neck, original body, of course the bridge, original pickups. It still has the three-way switch, original pots, capacitor, jack, and the jack plate. Let's take a listen to this. I'm playing this through my Trainwreck Liverpool, through my normal Ampeg V4 cabinet. Here we go. Next up is my other favorite Fender Stratocaster. This originally started out as a parts project for me in the late 90s. I stumbled across this neck. It's a real 1960 Fender slabboard Stratocaster neck. But when I got the neck, it had no frets, no nut, no finish on the headstock, no decal, no tuners, no string tree. So I gave this to my buddy Bill Cherinsky from BB and the Stingers, and he put a new finish on the headstock, got me a decal that Bernie had, got me a set of tuners, a string tree, made the nut, and then refretted it. This neck is now married to an early 90s Fender Custom Shop Relic Stratocaster body. This was one of the very first Relic Stratocaster bodies that I had seen. They did such a great job when they first started doing them, and the body is super light and the neck and the body sound phenomenal together. I have Peter Florence Voodoo 60 Series Stratocaster pickups in it. Thank you, Peter, once again. And it has a Callaham bridge and top plate. I think it also has CTS pots from Callaham, but it also has an old capacitor. Let's take a listen.
Next up is another parts guitar, something that I put together in the early 2000s. This was an experiment because I wanted to experience and feel what Jimi Hendrix had as a left-handed player playing a guitar that was upside down but strung for the left-handed player. So I had a left-handed guitar made that is now upside down and strung for the right-handed player. The body was made by Peter Florence. The neck is straight from Fender. I think it's an East Indian Rosewood fretboard on the guitar. Now what's so cool about this guitar is that it puts the strings on the wrong side of the pickups. So the low E string is now on the high E string pickup pole piece. Now it's not a huge difference, but there is a difference when you do that, and of course Jimmy must have experienced that. So what Peter did for me is he made a custom set of pickups that are actually reverse made, because they didn't actually make left-handed pickups, and you can't just take the right-handed pickup out and reverse it because of the bottom plate won't fit the route that's in the body. So Peter made me this custom set of pickups for the guitar. The only downside to the guitar is it's kind of uncomfortable because your arm is always hitting the controls, namely the tone pot. What's kind of cool about that is that you can change pickup selector switches if you're wearing a long sleeve shirt or a jacket. So let's take a listen to this. Here we go. Next up is a Fender Custom Shop Relic 1967 Telecaster. Fender did such a good job with this guitar, I absolutely love it. I did change the pickups out. This has Peter Florence Telecaster pickups and the neck pickup has the longer pole pieces in it to make the neck pickup more usable. I did change the pots also. They're RS guitar pots, I think CTS, and also RS's capacitor. Let's check this out. <laughs> Thank you. 
Last up is my final Telecaster, another really cool guitar that was built by a friend of mine. It is a Fender neck and he built the body. The back of it is mahogany, the top of it is flame maple. It is heavily chambered so it's super light and there is a pretty big difference in tone on a chambered body versus a solid body. This also has Peter Florence Telecaster pickups in it, RS pots, and a capacitor. Let's check this out. Well, there we have it, folks. Episode number 16. Don't forget, go right to my website, mattoreband.com. Send me some email. Let me know what you think. Also, don't forget, my brand new record is out, Brotherhood. Features a lot of these Fender guitars on this record. Also featured on the record is David Bryan from Bon Jovi, Steve Cropper from Booker T and the MGs, and Bruce Springsteen. Episode number 17 is coming right up. As promised, I said before, a dear friend of mine, Jeff Schloeder from Middletown, New Jersey, built me a beautiful double neck custom guitar. The whole episode will be on this guitar. We'll see you then. Stay tuned. Yeah.